already 135 seconds. I'm waiting to see where my videos at so that I can see it. I don't know why it always does this. It only pops up when I log out. So I gotta sign out and then go and watch it. Or put it on anyway. So if anybody's watching, just give me a second while I set myself up. So that I can see who's on with us today. There we go. Hello. I see you guys. Let me just move this thing up real quick so that I can see my comments. How we doing? Hi, Barry. Hi, Tina. Hi, Mama Cats. Miha, what's your name? Because I'm always calling you Mama Cats. It sounds kind of weird. <laughs> your name doesn't sound weird, but it sounds weird for me to always say that, you know, in reference to saying hello. <laughs> You've been waiting for me. Oh, my God. I feel so special. <laughs> Hi, Isabel. So we're going to be making some cards today. Don't mind the phone. It always gets crazy when I'm busy for some reason. So we have some cards to make. GS. It's going to be one of those days today. And I have a little bit of a lag here on my end. So while you guys are typing, I'm still trying to catch up to what I'm actually seeing. Hi. Kathy. Kathy. Uh, let me write that down. Memo to self. Mama cats is Kathy. I won't forget it no more, Kathy. I'll tell you that. Kathy, Brandy, Tina, Dana. So, let me show you guys the latest card that I made. I actually did this one last night. Um, for those of you that follow me on my Instagram, you guys saw it already. Um, but this is the famous Z fold that everybody's doing right now. So I made this because I got me my own little Julia Nutton uh, stamp. This one's Kate. So I figured I'd use that. Uh, it was kind of good the long ways um, to use it on this kind of card. So I did that one yesterday. We're going to be making one of these. Hi, um, Brakil from Sweden. I hope I said your name right. Thanks for joining us over here in the U.S. <laughs> Yes, so we're going to be doing that. <laughs> yeah, sorry, girl. Sorry, Kathy. I got to say it a lot. So if you hear me say your name a lot throughout the video, it's just me programming myself so that I can, uh, you know, commit it to memory. So we're going to be making this awesome Z Fold card. This is my very first time making this card, and it's super, super easy. Um, and it's definitely something that I know all of you guys can do hands down. So we're going to do this one. And then we're also going to be making... Um, I don't know which one of you have seen my video, but this is the pop-up twist card that kind of closes like this, and then it just kind of pops up like this. Um, this is another card that I've been seeing a lot of uh, crafty ladies making. Um, the video that I saw and I got inspired from was from Crafty Paws. Um, she did this really awesome coffee card, um, and I just fell in love instantly with the dynamics of the card and just how it, you know, it twists to flip open. So that was really cool. So we're going to be making one of these. And then, I haven't finished it because I was actually working on these last night and, you know, the sleep kind of beat me. Uh, this is what they call a pointed, um, a pointed corners card. And what it is, is it pops open like this. And then it just closes back into a little book. Wouldn't this make like the most awesome little flip book? I could just see like all these little flip elements like flipping things up this way like I just think it would be so cool so uh, this is what we're gonna be doing today I'm hoping to be able to get all three of these cards done I haven't done any cutting at all so we're gonna do everything live um, so that if that way Christelle okay hi Christelle from Sweden thank you for joining us um, 
So this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be leaving this one for last because I think this is the most complicated one just because there's so many elements you have to glue in. Um, but I do hope to get this one in. The very first one that we're going to be working on is going to be the Z fold because it's the easiest of the three cards. And then we're going to move on to the twist pop-up card. And mind you, I have none of the elements ready to go. This is all like a work in progress as my mind goes. So with my hands, okay? So bear with me, y'all. Hi, little crafts. <laughs> oh, you're making pancakes with chocolate chip? I love um, chocolate chip pancakes. And banana pancakes with chocolate chip. Yum, yum. All right, so we're going to go ahead and recreate this card here. So to make this card, let me just put some of this stuff to the side and put this card to the side because we're not going to need it. Um, what we're going to need is one eight and a half by 11. And I did this card uh, the long ways, but you can also do it, you know, this way. It all depends on what your, you know, what your preference is or what size of an image you're going to use. Since I'm going to be making it with the Julia Nutton stamp, I'm going to use it the long way because she just fits better, um, you know, in these dimensions. So, I'm going to get my scoreboard. So, this is what we're going to need to start off. Just one sheet of 8, eight and a half by 11, and then we'll do all the other panels and stuff separate. Um, that way, at least I can get you guys, you know, the, the basis of the construction uh, ready to go. So this is very simple you guys, all you want to do is you grab your 8.5 by 11 the long ways, so the 11.5 um, going this way, okay, and we're going to score this paper at 5, 5.5, I'm going to use my other little scoring tool which scores a lot better, and I hope I'll be able to keep up with you guys' comments and stuff, but you know how I am, once I get going I start losing uh, track. <laughs> Um, if you guys have any questions or if you guys want me to explain something over again then just let me know um, and even though there's a little lag between the video and the comments I'll try to answer your questions um, so 8.5 by 11 okay and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna score this at 5.5 all the way across so that I have a long base so we're starting off with you know the regular dynamics of a card okay And what was the second step to this? Just, I have so many steps now going through my head. Um, and then two and three quarters right now. So you know what? To make life easier, once you have this half and you have it scored down the middle, then the next thing to do is pretty much fold this one in so that it's directly at uh, your score mark. Okay. and just make sure you score that fold it back okay so now you have it so this is pretty much the basis of the card so as it opens then this part here will pop out this element here so we have the first part of our card super simple now we're going to do the band that connects this page to this page here and for that, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves another uh, card piece of cardstock. And this one we're going to have to cut. So I'm going to put my cutting board to the side, my um, scoring board to the side. And grab myself a cutting board. And we want it to be the same size as the paper. So however the width of your paper is, make sure that your strip is the same, you know, the same length. Uh, Width-wise, doesn't matter, just length-wise. Um, it has to be more or less the same. And all I'm going to use as far as a band for this, I'm going to keep it at about 2 inches because I think that's pretty good. You can make this band as big, you know, as, as uh, wide as you want. Or as narrow, it's completely up to you. Putting this to the side. Grabbing my scoreboard yet again. And pretty much repeating the same steps, I'm going to score it at 5.5 and, and then... Um, score that page down the middle as well so scoring this band at five and a half
I thought it was going to be so much more complicated than this, you guys, when I first heard of, um, you know, the, the terminology Z card. Hi, Didi. Thanks for joining. No, you haven't missed anything. Super simple. Eight and a half by 11 sheet. Score it at five and a half. Then grab one side and score that in half. And what you want, you want one side to point this way while the rest of the card points that way. So when you fold it regular, then just the top flap has to point that way. Not this way, not in, but you want it to point out so that it forms the Z. And that's where we are so far. This is the band uh, that connects both of those sides and we're scoring that. I just scored it down the middle at five and a half. You're cleaning your craft room. I've, I've been doing that all morning. I've been cleaning my craft room or well, my craft area because I don't have a room. I have a table that's overloaded. So now I'm just going to go ahead and fold that. So I have, you guys can see that edge. I have the two sides. Okay. And you want to make sure that um, you just kind of, you know, if you have a bone folder, if you don't have a bone folder, use the back of a scissor, you know, and just score that down, you know, tighten those, um, those areas up. So when you apply this, what you want to do is you want to take this long one, you want it to be the opposite. You close your card, you take the band, as you can see the long one is up on top of the shorter one, and then you want the short one to be on the, on the wider page in the bottom. And you just measure that up. You see, so it should measure exactly. Once we have everything decorated and everything glued, as you open it, then you're going to get that pop-up, that dimensional effect. Okay? So we have the two pieces, and that's all this card uh, really needs. Once you have these two pieces, your card is pretty much constructed. The rest is decoration. Don't glue this down until you've decorated your card, unless you're using paper that's already, you know, to your liking. So... The next thing to do is grab us some paper. So let me grab some paper. Because as some of you guys know, with me is as you go. <laughs> I'm in my room. <laughs> I'm in my room and I have a corner. I have a crafty corner. <laughs> with leaning towers of stuff um, so I'm just trying to decide here on what paper pad uh, to use let's go with this pretty one because everything that I'm making today somebody's taking home so depending on how many cards I can get out um, you know we're gonna do the little giveaway at the end and somebody will be winning you know one of each so let me go ahead and grab some of this beautiful paper and see which one I go with. Uh, something that has, I like that purple. Yeah. What do you think guys? This purple one looks pretty, right? I have that purple one and I have two of those. So I'm wondering what I can use for a band. So now I'm just kind of looking around to see Every time I see green, I just work. I'm like, I want to use that green one, but I know I can't always use that green because I'm running out. That's pretty. Oh my god, I just love the papers in this collection. Like in this in this paper pad, it's so nice, so so nice. I wish I had one more. I've had this for almost a year, you guys. I don't. I hardly ever use it. Um, just because I'm like, uh uh. Um. I'm kind of trying to go with this, but I'm not sure. I definitely, I'm think, I'm feeling this purple one. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. Ever so gently. So I'm going to use that. I'm thinking about using this uh, image right here for that part there. So that should look nice. And maybe I could just use a, a piece of this. I'll probably use a piece of this side here uh, to add for the band. 
or something in the middle. We'll see. Because I'm going to try to get all my sheets out of this one uh, sheet. And then we'll figure it out. If I need to grab another sheet, then I'll grab another sheet. But for now, I'm going to use that. So just to give you guys some quick measurements here, even though I'm not the greatest at measuring. So you know that our, our back page is five and a half, right? It's five and a half by uh, eight and a half, okay? So you want to make sure that when you cut your paper, you can either cover the whole thing or you can, you know, leave the little border depending on what paper you're using. I like to leave the little black border, so I'm going to cut it a little bit smaller um, than what I actually need to cover the back. And then each of these little panels, because these are exactly the same size, it's two and a half no two and three quarters by the same thing eight and a half okay so the same thing I need two of these and then I need one of these okay and it's up to you if you want to decorate the back or anything like that I'm not gonna go through all of that I just want to get the basis of the card and then we'll figure it out from there so this is the part that I need here so let's see how we do on my little doohickey <laughs> Yes, I just love this paper, you guys. Oh, my God. I so try not to use it. I really do, but I figured today I'll spoil you guys. So, we have five and a half. So, I'm going to leave it at maybe about five. About five inches, I'm thinking, should be good. That way, I have about a half an inch on each side of the border. Create like a half an inch border around. So, I'm just going to cut this. Here we go, no going back from there. So I figured that'll give it a nice little accent and make that paper pop out. And then it's eight and a half, so I'm just gonna cut it at eight. And then, who was it that asked me, was it you Didi? No, it wasn't you, it was Blessed1880. She's the one that asked me how to use a measuring tool. Um, I was going to explain it, but if you guys need me to explain it, let me know. Hi, Nevis. Um, but more or less. I myself am not 100% there with using this thing. I do get my measurements wrong all the time. Which is why I'm always double checking. So I'm just going to use the back of this to see. And yeah, I like the way that looks. I like the way that looks. So we're going to use that and then we need to get two more pieces, two more panels of two and three quarters. So I'm thinking I'm just going to cut two, two, two inch strips and I'm trying to see how I'm going to do this because there's certain elements that I know I'm going to want. I don't want to cut up that butterfly. Oh my God, decisions, decisions. Um, so let me cut right before that butterfly. And maybe I can get my panel out of that. So if I have to cut this down, I might cut this down so that it fits. Or maybe I'll just leave it with the black. That might look nice since the whole thing has the black border going around. So I'll leave that alone for now. And then I want to get my two inch, my two inch strips, which hopefully I'll be able to get out of here. And somehow, some way, I'm going to end up cutting a butterfly from the looks of it because there's just no saving them. So, here we go. There's no going back. And I had to sacrifice half of the butterfly. That makes me sad. But we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. And again, another two inch strip. Okay, and then we just have to cut these strips down to the size that we need which is the eight inches is it eight no eleven so we just gotta cut an inch of this off you guys we just have to cut an inch off just trying to figure out which inch wait pause that because now I'm getting myself confused the so two eight and a half so it's gotta be eight inches where am I going where am I going I'm stuck on that band for some reason okay so eight inches you guys okay so that we have that nice border and I'm not I need a I sacrifice the butterfly I need to use it now 
Or maybe I don't need to use it for this one since I have it on the other one. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. So I'm going to do it at eight. And maybe I can still cut off the rest of that butterfly and glue it on there somehow. Maybe I can make it part of the dimensional effect. So we have this panel. And this one we're going to do the same thing. All that to sacrifice the butterflies and I didn't even end up. Yep, I'm not cutting that one the long way. So I'm going to cut. I'm going to reverse it so that I can use the other side. I'm going to reverse it. <laughs> Let's put that to the side. So more or less we have our panels, you guys. Okay. So we have our inside. We have this one here on the outside, but I think I'm going to cut that butterfly out and somehow add that in. I'm not sure, but I'll figure that part. I'm going to cut that butterfly out and attach it to that since I do have a little bit of room to adhere there. And then this side is going to be the inside panel. And we're going to do that that way. I'm just going to edge up my pieces so that I don't have that white, um, you know, border everywhere and then we're gonna make our little uh band so gotta get some ink can't do nothing without no ink let me see if i have purple here oh let me get one of my purple pen markers this will work yep and let me rough up one of these edges. let me rough up these edges real quick give it that extra dimension Oh, it's okay. Well, thank you for stopping by. Hopefully, we can catch you, you know, the next time. Plus, the video will be up on my channel um, once I'm done with the broadcast. So, you can always catch it later if you need. Thank you so much for coming all the way from Sweden. So, we're just roughing these papers up so that you can get a nice little edge around the page. Um, which also creates like this little border, if you will. And at the same time, it just makes it nicer when you edge it up because it just makes everything pop out a little bit more 3D. So I'm just using my, the back of my scissor to do this. Just makes it look a little bit more um, fancy. And I was actually hoping to find, well, I have, I just don't know where I put it, um, white ink so that I can stamp some white um, ink all over that background, but I don't find it anywhere. I don't know if I sold it in one of my D stashes or what the heck I did, but oh well. All's well that ends well. She's from Sweden, Nevis. She's here all the way from Sweden. So we're going to do this. Let's color this. <clears throat> so I'm just going to run my little alcohol marker through and just darken up those edges. You can use an ink pad if you have. I just actually like using the marker because it bleeds a little bit. Um, so it actually ends up covering just a slight amount of the inside part. And this color matched this paper beautifully. And we got that. And these are my fine color markers that I purchased from eBay, 40 bucks for like 80 of them. And I love them. I'm sure I would love Copics more, but um, they cost too much money for me. My blood is not that rich. <laughs>
hopefully one day right we can all hope to have like a whole house for a craft room and be able to fill it with all the expensive goodies all right i'm not using this right now so i got all my corners edged up just gonna get my glue and you could do something fancy with this if you want like if you wanted to punch out if you have like a border punch and you wanted to punch out all the borders you can do that i mean it's your card you can do it you know however you want um if you want to keep it simple you could do it this way too keep it nice and simple i'm going to use my glue hello hello mom to create thanks for watching thanks for joining us so I'm just going to add my glue here with my little fine tip and just kind of put it everywhere. And with whatever paper is left over, I might just um, punch out some butterflies just to give it that little special effect. Um, this is the important thing here is trying to get this thing centered and getting your edges more or less in good approximation because once this thing is down, it is down. Now we just have to make sure we pick some nice paper for her dress that makes her kind of pop out of everything. I'm going to go ahead and add this one to the outside. I could have even made this one a little bit thicker. But oh well. We're here now. <laughs> We're here now, so um, remember you can play around with your sizes a little bit. But we can also add some embellishments here and there and add some things to kind of cover up that little bit of, um, you know. Alrighty. So this is going to go here. So I'm just trying to eyeball it so that I can see that it is... Uh, more or less in line with this card also so you want to try to make sure that they're <clears throat> in line so you don't have one card up this way one card down that way but so far so good and then I have to cut out that little teeny butterfly the rest of it so that I can adhere that in we're gonna give her some flight I didn't sacrifice her for nothing. Hmm. That's the good and the bad thing about having these kinds of papers. They're so gorgeous. Um, but if you're going to use the whole page, you're good to go. But if you have to, for any reason, cut, you know, one part of it or any other part of it, then it's like, uh, you always somehow end up sacrificing something and you feel so bad. Okay, so, again, trying to keep it all in frame and kind of moving this one a little bit over That's, that looks about good there all right so we have our three panels okay and now I'm gonna cut apart this little uh, thingy over here this little butterfly she tried to escape, but I'm not letting her. She can get off that easy. See, she's trying to escape. You think I'm kidding? She's mad because I cut her in half. And now she doesn't want to stay. And now she doesn't want to stay. Mm. So I'm just fuzzy cutting her around and voila, we have, we have success. How? She go right there. She go right there. Now let me get some marker that I can shade the edges in. Oh, you guys are watching the Super Bowl? I'm not a sports person. Yeah. I figured I'd do this to let anybody that wants to escape the madness. They can come into my little haven over here and be safe.
perfect. So let's just go ahead and I'm just going to add some glue here. And I'm going to glue her in. And we're going to glue her in just about there. And since that's just how I am, I'm going to, I have to add a little bit of blingage there, but I'll probably do that after the fact. Um, so what do we have next to do? We have to add our little Z band here. So we have this paper here. Now I'm just trying to see where I want to start off at. Since I do have the whole 12 pieces, I want to see where I go. So I'm thinking this might be, yep, that'll, that'll be the ticket right there. Let me just go ahead and shade this in as well. And we're going to do my scissor. We're going to shade this part in as well. And I'm just going to do the whole thing because, like I said, I don't know how much of it. Well, I know how much of it I'm going to need, but I don't necessarily know just by looking at it where 11 inches starts or stops or whatever the case may be. So I'm just going to shade the whole, the whole thing. Might as well. This is a super easy way of shading in your stuff it's with a marker super quick so we have that done and we're gonna go right about here yep so I'm just gonna stretch this whole thing out and gonna be my first base so that's gonna be I'm gonna score this strip at five and a half just to get that first um fold going since it's gonna be my longest fold and then I'll play the rest by ear but I just want to at least have that one fold in there and then just gluing her in And then just trying to find the middle here somewhere. Trying to find that middle ground. And I think that's trying to make sure everything is nice and leveled. And we're pretty much in a good place. Okay. And Using the fact that there's a folder, just flipped it over and just kind of, you know, did that thing. Did that right there. And I'm not adding glue directly on the folds themselves. I'm gliding, I'm adding the glue right before, right after, but not on the folds. I want that to have a little bit of room so when I open it, um, you know, it's not uh, subject to crack or break. That's another thing that I like and I dislike about these paper pads. <clears throat> I wish that when you scored them, they don't, they wouldn't crack. Like the colors, um, the patterns, the paper itself wouldn't crack and expose the white. Hi, Debbie. Thanks for joining. And so, okay, so we have our bands, right? Just going to cut off all this little excess here. Because we really don't need it. So there's no point in keeping it there. <clears throat> and I'm just going to shade this part in because that's just me. So we have our Z band. Remember this long part is going to get attached to the small part. 
and I'm thinking about maybe doing it there and like this and in this distance most likely um, she is going to cover the inside so she's gonna be somewhere in the background as opposed to in the foreground so we're gonna see how that works out um, but you see what I mean you guys it starts to kind of crack a little bit that annoys me to know and it really really does it really does so usually what I do is so if you guys ever find get a card for me or anything that has a, a line through it like some shading in that part it's probably because the paper started to crack because I'm not ashamed to say it alright so I'm thinking right about there will be a good place to do it so from here to there so I'm just gonna So right about there and I'm just making sure that everything is hopefully you guys can see well just making sure that everything is at a good level here while the card is closed just making sure everything is good right and now I'm gonna just kind of flip this card over open this flap up And just on that side there. You want it to have a natural close, so just fold the card close. Okay? You've already attached your your thingamabob. So just fold that Z close. And you should be good to go. And I know I kind of covered up that butterfly in the background, but I did that for a reason because I'm going to put her in here. I'm going to stand her right there. So this is more or less what this is looking like. Very pretty, super, super simple as you guys can see. Um, very simple to create. So I got to get my stamp and I'm going to let this dry for now and then we'll see what else we do because I do have bits and pieces of paper left over. So I just might punch out some butterflies. Or something just to give us some extra embellishment. But super cute. Um, the kind of glue that I use is this glue right here. It's the glue from the Dollar Tree. And what I do is I take it out of this bottle here. And I put it in this fine tip bottle. Um, which these come from Deco Art. They sell the caps. Um, and you get a, a, I'm not sure how much it costs. I think it's like $3 or $4 or something like that, but you get the cap. Um, but you can also find these caps anywhere. If you find, if you look for a two ounce bottle, cause you got to put the size of the, the ounces of the bottle. You put two ounce bottles, um, fine tip and you should be able to find it online, um, or in any crafty store. Um, but this is what I use. The dollar glue. I love this glue. I use this glue on everything. Everything that I create um, goes with that glue because it glues everything. It literally glues almost everything. I haven't found something that it doesn't glue together. If I leave it set long enough, it'll glue it together. So we have our beautiful card. Now I'm going to go ahead and stamp out my girl and get her all ready for the prom. And we're going to figure this out. And I just have to find my stamp. So I already have one part of her stamped out, but I have to stamp out her dress. So I have to find some paper to use for her dress. So I'm going to see what I find here that all that will look good on that paper. How about this orange? Because purple and orange go good. This orange should look good on her, right? And the, it kind of pop makes the butterfly pop out a little bit more too. What do you guys think? This purple one, purple and, and orange. I'm thinking that I like that. This is a little darker. But I don't want her to blend in. I want her to pop out. So I'm going to leave it <clears throat> with that bright one to help her pop out a little bit from the actual background itself. And I'm going to stamp this dress onto that paper and then I'm going to cut that out 
And I already have her here. All I have to do is color her face and color, you know, the rest of her, which I'm going to do that with a marker. Um, and then we'll be good to go. I'm going to put this to the side. I'm going to put these to the side. And I'm going to get this going. Now, I didn't have a long, um, you know, one of these huge stamper things. I have my stamping board, which is perfect if I want to use this on another um, kind of situation. Especially if I want to, like, mass produce a whole bunch of images. Um, I can use my, you know, my little stamper that I made. But, I'm actually going to use this glass mat that I have because I, I found that it kind of works really well and I can see what I'm doing. Um also pretty good so I'm just gonna pop her onto that and I'm going to use some archival ink and just get her ready to go put my little dress uh, paper there and I'm just kind of interested in this part here so I don't really have to worry too much about the rest of her I just want those lines to come out nice and crisp when I do stamp it down. Let me tell you what I use my heat gun for. <laughs> I use my heat gun to melt wax. <laughs> I use my heat gun for everything but what I'm supposed to use my heat gun for. And I, I have one. <laughs> it's right here. And it's still in the box that it came in because that's how much I use it. I don't have black embossing powder so I don't emboss much. All I have is gold. And what I notice is that gold embossing powder is not that bright. It doesn't pop out too much. So I think I've pressed that long enough. Um, so I just kind of, I haven't been embossing because of that. Like if I have something that I've made like mixed media wise that I know um, requires for me to like dry it, then like I'll go and hook it up in my kitchen and dry it. That's another thing. I have to go all the way to my kitchen to hook it up because otherwise we'll be out here with no lights calling the super like, hey, hurry up. We, we got no light. We need you to um, come and flick the switch, which is not in our apartment because that was like pure genius when they built this place. Um... So I'm just going to leave that there. So that's another reason why I kind of just don't use it. Because it's just a pain in my tush. So we'll leave that alone. You know, this is what happens. So now I'm just going to cut this dress out. Now if you wanted to get fancy, the way that these Julia Nutton dolls are, um, the dresses, you can actually come cut them out, um, you know, in sections. Just stamp the image multiple times. And then you could actually cut out each little section individually shaded. And then it actually gives the dress more dimension. It makes it look like the dress is actually flowing. Um, and it creates a very pretty look. But I'm not going to do that for this one. I'm just going to cut the whole dress out, you know, as a whole. And I'm going to shade it, but I'm going to just shade the edges off with the marker. And keep it simple. But today. You got one in a this dash destabilizing this dash my iPad on auto what? I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> I have no clue what you're talking about, girl. I know it's something to do with a de-stash, but I don't know if you de-stash your iPod or if you de-stash something else. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to try to fuzzy cut this thing if my hand will let me work. And I'm just going to go around the outline of this dress and get her going. And this is supposed to be my simplest card, right? But... You know, if you don't have to do all these things, then you're good to go. If you have, like, preset embellishments, then you can just add your embellishments. That card is pretty enough as it is. You could just add a sentiment, and you're good to go. But since I'm going to be giving this to one of you guys, I want it to be pretty special. And so I'm going the extra mile right now and 
doing all of this extra stuff. <laughs> Which is another thing for me now. I'm actually waiting on, well, I'm not so much waiting on as more as I'm trying to save up for uh, embellishments because I'm like plump dry over here. And granted, I could make a lot of my own stuff, but uh, I can't make fox pearls. I don't have none of those machineries here, so. Um, those kinds of things are like out of the question for me right now. So I have a lot of knickknacks and stuff, but there's only but so many flowers you can make and add to something. Um, so I'm just going to try to go for like a darker orange over here. Almost like a brown. This is like a red. Let's see if I can find a color that is halfway. That's too dark too. Um... Okay. Maybe this will do. Oh, hell no. That's like chocolate. Okay. This says light orange. This is too light. Okay. Unprepared. Unprepared, people. I am unprepared. Just trying to find a color that's not too dark. Okay, that'll work. It's not too dark. One does not have time to make the only I know. I, I used to have. I used to have a lot because when I first started getting into the actual card making and doing something besides painting all the time that I actually started to find, um, get an interest for this stuff, the first things I started to do was make my own embellishments because I saw that, um, you know, everything has an embellishment. <laughs> you know, there's always bling here, bling there. There's, you know, there's always something that makes it pretty, you know, that makes it, gives it that little extra oomph, makes it pop out a little bit more. So I was making my own, you know, little details here and there, but I ran out. And then when it came time to actually, you know, uh, get some more, I just never really had the time. Uh, or I always thought of something else that I could spend my money on, like paper pads or stamps <laughs> or dyes, because I'm like obsessed with eBay right now I have like so many embossing folders coming in I'm like I don't even know what I'm gonna do so I'm just adding some shading here you guys um, and this is like a brown don't ask me the color because the numbers make no sense with um, these cheap markers they do an awesome job coloring and the ink flows very well which is why I didn't throw them in the garbage or give them away to somebody else I probably wouldn't have done that well maybe I would have but with some warning like this and they're not that great <laughs> um, but for the most part I forgot what I was going to say <laughs> oh yeah eBay cutting dice and um, now, there's, now I found that like, they're upgrading their embossing folders and like there's all these new embossing folders out like there's a whole bunch of people selling embossing folders now I don't know, I swear they have like secret meetings or something over there. And now, I done bought a whole bunch of embossing folders and a whole bunch of new um, cutting dies that are coming now. And I'm about to hit them up and be like, listen, I need a percentage because um, I'm over here showcasing your stuff and uh, I need a, a freebie or something, you know? Hook a sister up. So, we have that going. We got this now. I just have to find what is cherry pale. This is cherry pale and pale fruit pink. These are almost the same color, you guys. This cream is way too dark. So I'm trying to find salmon pink this might work these have names that have nothing to do with the color that is inside barely beige so I'm gonna just swatch these out real quick I'm just gonna do it right here that's a nice skin tone so this is barely beige fruit pink okay 
salmon pink just so that I know okay that salmon pink might be the one because it's lighter it's the lightest one of all of them this is not too bad but it's not this is the lightest one the salmon pink yeah they're really good um, they do the same job as the $10 ones let me tell you they do the same job and they're about the same width too um, they're not as wide as um, the Spellbinder ones, but I think the Spellbinder ones are designed for their machines, which is just a, a hairline fraction uh, wider, uh, so they take the wider um, folders, but for the most part, this is pretty good. Okay. Give me one second, you guys. Let me shut off this fold. Don't you just love it? People don't remember you throughout the week. But come you get busy. Find something to do and watch that phone start ringing like crazy. It drives me absolutely nuts. So I'm just going to do this rather quickly. Well, at least that's what I say. Hopefully it's what I end up doing. Um... I'm not worrying about the dress because I'm covering the dress up, so I just want to get her actual uh, skin in. And this cardstock is the Georgia Pacific cardstock. On eBay, it's like $10 for like 500 sheets or something like that. I don't even know how much. Um, I bought it a couple months ago, and I'm down to like this much. I have to order again. Um, but it's really good cardstock. Especially for stamping out these kinds of images and stuff. And her legs, am I going to color her? Yeah. I thought I was going to maybe do something different with her legs, but I'm not. And I'm just going to color them all the way down. And I'll use one of my other colors here to um, just add a little bit of highlight here and there. What I'm trying to do now is actually find an ink pad uh, that doesn't... It doesn't react to the alcohol. You know, before it used to be that the, the other ink pads, um, you add water and they're like all over the place. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I went and I go and I buy the, the better one, right? And now that one is reacting to my stamping and my alcohol marker. So it's kind of driving me a little crazy, but we'll figure that out. We'll figure that out. What did I do with, which one's this one? Okay, this is a little darker. So I'm just adding a little bit of shading, you guys. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the dyes are the best. Yes, happy birthday to Debbie's son. How old is he, Debbie? So I'm just adding a little bit of shading, nothing too crazy. A little bit of shading in the in this area here. Nothing too nuts. Okay. She would have shading if she actually had an armpit there. So I'm just gonna, I, I just added that in for good measure. And I need her hair. What color am I gonna do her hair? Lord. 54 minutes making one card. <laughs> I tell you, no matter what you do, orange. No. What color should I make her hair? I don't even know. Any suggestions? Should she be a blonde, brunette, black hair? Hi, Joy. 29. Wow. My twins are 18, my oldest. And I... They're going to college this year. Well, they're in high school now. They're finishing up now in June. Then they'll be going off to college. And I don't know what I'm going to do because they're my oldest. And they'll be on their way 
One wants to be a scientist, the other one wants to be a criminal psychologist or something like that. So I know that they're going to be in college for quite some time. A little vacation in, a, in some ways, but not in every, in every aspect. Okay, that's the same orange as that one. I'm trying to find something for her hair. I'm going a little crazy because all these browns are dark. I have these spectrums here that I just bought off of Carla's Crafty Corp. I bought the browns that she was selling. I don't know how many of you guys saw that she was selling uh, some spectrum. So I'm going to try these out. I haven't tried them out at all. And I'm going to use these two colors here to see if this does the trick. This one is the GB10. This is a little, it's a little dark. Let's see this GB8. Okay. That'll do you. So... You vote for fire. Well, girl, the Browns beat you. <laughs> the Browns beat you. I actually just got, um maybe like three days ago, two days ago, three days ago, I got the, the Jane Davenport stamps. I bought all three sets um, of her stamps. And the first thing I did was stamp out a girl and paint her hair red. <laughs> Now, I'm not one of these fancy marker artists that um, can make magic with the markers. I know a little bit of blending, that's about it. Okay, so you won't get too, too much flair out of me in that department. You won't get too, too much flair out of me. So I'm just going to... Just kind of loop all of this stuff in there and just kind of outline her hair just a smidge just to make it stand out a little bit and just because that's just the way I am. I'm just going to outline this a little bit. And then I'm going to use this really dark brown to kind of use it for the centerpiece in her hair. Add a little bit of this to her tips. And I think she's good to go. So let's get the cut in, let's get the glue in, and let's move on to the next card. Um, I don't know about the memento, but... This is what I have so far that I've noticed cause a reaction. Uh, the archival ink causes a reaction off the gate with the alcohol markers. I don't care what they say. Because it's a proven fact. I've stamped a couple times. Every time when I go color with my alcohol markers, it smears it a little bit. It doesn't do a crazy job. Like, it doesn't smear it all over the place. But it does react. It does react to the, um, to the alcohol. This is actually color box. Um, and color box doesn't do it that much either, but again, it does have some kind of a reaction to the alcohol marker. So I have to try a different ink to see if it does too. Um, but I'm running out of options here. So far, they all do it. I haven't done her shoes yet, but I'm going to do it. I wonder where Maida is. I know she told me she had wanted to see uh, these cards, but I guess she'll be catching me on the rerun, if you will. I wish I could fast forward this part for you guys. This is what the magic of 
watching somebody's video after it's uploaded does. The most tedious part, the fuzzy cutting. And I still want to get that pointed um, card in, but I got to see how I do that one because I might just mass produce all the pieces real quick so that I can glue everything in because that one requires just a lot of paneling. Um, even if I don't get to finish the embellishment aspect of it, but it does require a lot of paneling. And I want you guys to see how that one's done too. And I'm going to be working with that. I, I think that there's a lot of things that you can do with that um, pointed card. There's a lot of different things that you can do with it besides what the obvious is. Um, so I'm going to be playing with that whole process and seeing what else I could come up with. I'll definitely keep you guys posted if there is anything else coming out with that. One thing I did notice with these alcohol markers, they're very good for coloring, but um, sometimes the color will change on you once it's all dry. I don't know if that's the case with all alcohol markers, because these are the first like official alcohol markers that I've... And I say that they're official because they do the job, but um, we know we mean the bootleg official, right? Um, but these are like the first official uh, alcohol markers that I have. Girl, stand up straight. She's falling all over the place on me already. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if um, they kind of change color. I don't know if all the other ones do the same. And I wish I can show you guys, but I'm just gonna cat, you know, use it as a as a as some definition for now. All the bleeding that actually took place uh, from that ink, and that is again the Ranger. Uh, which I thought was supposed to be like the bomb dig it, but I guess only for some things. Usually when I'm crafting and I'm not recording, you know, like live, I have my Spanish music in my ear. And my hands are flinging all over the place and I'm singing out loud. It's so quiet. <laughs> I wish I could at least hear you guys. Um, reading your comments is cool too, but I wish I could hear you. I, I wish it was like a crafty, you know, like it was all in one room, all crafting at the same time. Like, that would be so cool. Instead of like bingo night, we have like crafty night. But then I don't think we will get a lot of crafting done. Because I know I'm super silly. Make sure when you do it after you put the ink on blow on it live your fog glass first. What? On it live your fog glass work. Joy, I'm lost. And never the singing. <laughs> All right, so we're almost there, you guys. <laughs> How long? An hour later. And we finally got this girl cut out. All right, so I'm just going to punch a little hole here. And try to get my scissor in here very carefully. Very, very carefully, man. All right, we have success. 
Do we? Do we really though? Mm, yes, we do. Okay. All right. We did it. Do I want to use this one? I'm just going to shade this out, you guys, because that's just me. And let's add her dress and get this girl ready for the ready for the ball. So we got her down. We got her down. Perfecta Mundo. She looked pregnant, but she'll survive. This dress form. Come on, glue. There we go. And this mark, the, the ink, um, the markers do bleed a lot through the paper. So you got to be careful what you use and what images you have under. When coloring, make sure that um, you're coloring on something that is not important because it will bleed through. We have success. I have to color her shoes. And her shoes are going to match her dress. So I know I pulled out a marker here that looked at, kind of like that orange. So this one. And what do I want to do here? I'm going to do her shoes. And then I'm going to add some of this lighter brown to it because they seem to have like, oh, I said lighter and I picked the darkest brown I had in here. Lord help me. Some things you just can't, you just, you just can't make them up. I said, let me pick the lightest brown and pick the darkest brown I have. I'll tell you. These things look like sneakers once they're all colored in. But oh well, I see Sarah. Like my mom used to tell me. Uh uh, two, two baps. We got five minutes to go. Your hair's crooked? Oh well, I see Sarah. Let's go, let's go. Oh, your ponytail lopsided? Psst, too bad. I told you to get dressed an hour ago. So we're going to put that there. We're going to put that there. I don't like the, the white little edges showing. So that's why I'm just adding a little bit more of this ink there. There we go. <laughs> We're always procrastinating, ladies. I don't know. I was always procrastinating. And the messed up thing is that I wanted to go. <laughs> I just took my time. Yeah. I took my time. Everything always got to be perfect. And then you walk out the door and you find out that your mascara is like halfway around your ear. Because you done blinked one too many times. So I'm liking how this is looking right there. And we're going to close that. And we're going to let this girl be. And all that just to add a girl there, right? So we have this first card done. And I'll probably embellish it more. Whoever wins it will probably receive something very different. Not very different, but slightly different uh, than what they're seeing here now. Because I will add some blingage and... Uh, I'll look to see what I have there, but this is what this card looks like. Super cute with the dimension and everything. And I got her kind of tucked away in there. And then you can always add your message somewhere in here, or you can add your message on the back of the card. 
like I said, if you want to decorate the back, that's up to you, depending on what paper you're using. If you're using double-sided paper or whatever, because um, you can make this out of anything. So this is what we have, one down. So today's lucky winner is going to take one and one. This one I made yesterday and this one I made today. So we have two of these to give away. We also have, are going to have, two of these to give away. This is the card that we're making next, which is the pop-up dimensional card. Which is super easy too. Again, the things that take the most when it comes to these cards is not so much making it, it's decorating it. Like, what? That's what takes the most. So let me put some of this stuff away. And then I'll get ready for the next, the next card. Put some of these markers over here. And I'm like lacking on so many things, you guys. Just I am short on ephemera. I'm short on trims. I'm short on so many things. And I've just been buying paper and buying stamps and markers that I don't need. Because I have like a wall of markers. And I just keep buying markers. I don't know why. I've got every color. And I just can't help myself. So, we're going to do this card now. So, let me just move this mess over here. Because I don't need this no more. And we're going to work on this one now. And for this one, I'm going to look at my trusty little notes. Hopefully, they're trusty little notes. Because this one is based more on a, on, on a science, on precise measurements, if you will, than the other ones. And I'm going to put this to the side because we don't need that one. And this one's going to be more of a Valentine's Day one. I'm going to gear it more towards Valentine uh, just to make life a little bit easier. And that's the thing with me. I gave so much of my stuff away. Like, I gave so much of my stuff away. I did so many D-stashes, um, and not so much just D-stashes, but like also, and through my Happy Meal, that when I was doing the Happy Meal Exchange, which is going to be coming back next month, I just gave everybody a month off because I know the Christmas is crazy and everybody's financially recuperating from Christmas, um, so I figured, you know what, I know I need to recuperate, I'm sure other people need to recuperate, so I'm going to, I'm revamping the whole uh, Happy Meal Exchange and we're going to be doing it a little bit different, um, but it's definitely coming back. So, for this card, uh, we need a card strip. There's going to be 11 inches by 4 and a quarter. So, I'm just trying to find what my quarter is. This is, this is half. This is a quarter here. Okay. I think that's a quarter because it's not easy to read on these uh, cutting boards sometimes. Let me get my scissor here my scissor yeah this is about four and a quarter okay so we got one strip of four and a quarter and we're gonna also need one strip that's ten by three so I'm thinking this is about three this is gonna be about three inches so I'm just gonna cut this at three inches so and then I need to cut this so 10 inches, and I know that, that that one's probably gonna be half an inch bigger than I needed. Um, it's 11, yeah, that was fine. So we're gonna cut this to 10 inches, okay? Took an inch off of that, which I could have just took an inch off. I don't know why I did all that extra stuff. So we have one that's 10 by three, we have one that's 11 inches by four inches so you guys can see the difference there and then we're going to need one more that's going to be uh eight and a half by three inches thank you thanks joy yes um i've been doing the happy meal exchange since like the beginning of last year and i did it all throughout the whole entire year and i was going to do a giveaway at the end of the year but the thing is that everything was so kind of like, people will do it one month, and then they will not do it the following month, and then they will come back. And I was really looking for more of a consistent exchange, um, because I do want to, like, you know, reward people that are consistently uh, participating. But it was always just, like, the same 
one or two people that were that were coming back coming back and i could just reward those people on my own since i exchanged with them anyway um but i have to do it a different way because i don't want people being left out that that hurts my heart um i want people to be you know i want everybody to come up with something um so i'm just doing i'm thinking about different ways of doing this um you know because i want like i said i want everybody to be able to participate so i'm gonna do it like small medium large or something like that which means that like people that are, are willing to like um they can only do small things because you know everybody has a budget it doesn't matter how big or how small but everybody has a budget um that way you know we can kind of figure out uh what you know who i can pair them up with and do it that way or who they can pair up with you know if people are looking for small if somebody's looking to do something a little bit more on the medium size which means that they can afford more or they have more stuff to give away um then they can do that or if somebody's really looking to like get rid of a large amount of things then they can do that and they can hook up with somebody who's also trying to do the same or exchange the same um but more or less in that in that area um i don't have all the dynamics yet but um it's something that i'm kind of thinking about and just trying to figure out all the different little kinks before i push it through all the way so so we have our three sizes okay so we have our 11 inch by four and a quarter inches we have our 10 inches by three inches and we have our eight and a half by three inches okay i'm gonna put these two to the side and we're gonna work on this which is gonna be our, our card base now this one is a lot smaller than this one okay because this one was just me working trying different sizes out but i'm going to give you guys the sizes most cost you know most normally used by everybody else because i figure once you get that that you know you get how the, the mechanism then you can make it as big as you want like i saw this one lady that did this huge one i was like what she used 18 18 inch paper i didn't even know they had 18 inches i was like okay I don't even know how to begin to mail out a card that's 18 inches long. So, um, I won't take you down that road. I figured something small that you guys can very easily fit into an envelope and send it out to a friend. Um, should be good to go. So, again, scoring it in a half, which is at five and a half, because remember, we're working with an 11 inch paper. So, five and a half and this is our card base we're gonna leave this alone okay now we're gonna go on to our second part and this is the 10 inch long paper okay and we're gonna score that at five inches because we want to score it in at half so we're gonna score that at five inches we're gonna fold this in half okay and then uh, choo, 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 choo. then we're gonna do a gate fold okay so a gate fold is very simple so we have our card in half and you just want to and this is just the easiest way to do it if you want to go by measurements then feel free to find some because <laughs> I don't have those for you I just have the easy way of doing things and you could do this even if you didn't have a scoreboard that's how simple it is hi Joyce so we're going to do a gate fold. So I folded my first card by just um, pairing it up with the center score line, okay, because we folded the paper in half. So we're going to fold this one in half, and we're going to fold this one in half as well. So I'm just going to go ahead, and I'm making sure that everything is leveled, as level as I can get it. Okay. And they call this the mountain fold okay because we have the two peaks this is going to be the part that pops out at you when you put your you know your your folded card together so we're going to leave this alone this is the magic piece because this is what lets your card pop out so this is what we're going to do with this this is our eight and a half piece by by three inches and i got these directions from watching crafty Paul's video so if you guys want a specific tutorial then you can watch her do it um, or you can just go through this whole long video if you want again, which I do not mind, and just get to this part and then you could do it there. Um, where's my, my, where's my sheet? Okay. 
So on this one, we're going to score in three places. Um, the first place that we're going to want to score is going to be at two and three quarter. Um, if any of you ladies have this scoreboard, uh, two and three quarters is the little dot right before the three. Okay. So what I'm thinking, well, I can't forget what I'm thinking because I lost my mind for two seconds. So the little dot is the dot right before the three. <laughs> I don't want to confuse you guys more than you might already be. So I'm going to score that two and three thirds. If everybody else is good at instructions, you're good to go. And then the next score line that we're going to do is again five and three quarter. What I said? I said two and three thirds, right? Yep. And then the next score line is five and three fourths. So we got the five and again, the that would be the little dot right there. I'm going to assume three quarter, three quarter. Yep, the little dot right there. Okay, so we have three sections here. You see that? If we folded it, we will have three sections. Now what you want to do is you want to hold it the long way. Okay, and you want to cut this, you want to score this baby down the middle. And this is three inches. So what is down the middle of three inches? Down one and a half? Because mm -hmm. 1.5 and 1.5 is three. So now we have what looks like six boxes. Okay, and this is what you want to do. You gotta form an X here in the center. This is the easiest way that I found to do this, okay? You wanna hold, let's say you have this little corner here, right? You wanna hold this little corner here and you wanna pair it up so that it's flush with that spot there, okay? So now you have your fold right there, right? Let's score that. So we just make sure that everything is nice and crisp because you want your lines to be as crisp as possible. So we have that one. Now we need to do an X to form it on the other side. So do the same thing again, okay? And just bring that corner, this corner must meet that corner there. And again, do the same thing. And this is just the easiest way because there's really no scoring tool for um, scoring crossways. At least I don't think there is, okay? So you just want to make sure that that's good to go. Once that's good to go, then repeat. Okay. Now you have an X, right? You have an X in the center. Let's fold this in half. Because we made that score line down the middle. Okay. Okay, pop up, pop up. Let me score this a little bit better. Make sure this is good. And this is why scoring this thing good is so important. Because it just makes life so much easier. When all your lines are good to go. Okay. <laughs> Come on, little puzzle. Come together. So. This is what you want to form. So, more or less, if you guys can see, you have this little part here. Push this in so that it's like if you were going to fly a plane, like if you was going to, you know, do a paper plane. Push that in so that that folds like this. Push this one in. Automatically, it starts to cave in. And there you go. And this is actually the part that allows your page to pop up because when it opens, it opens up like this. And then your, this thing here is there. Okay. So this is done. We have this done. Now it's time to decorate this. And that's all you need to make this card is those three pieces. And then whatever you're decorating with. Right. And your three pieces. So now to get some paper. What do I, I said I was going to do Valentine's, right? So let's keep it. Let's keep it cute. Let's keep it cute, you guys. Most of you that know me know, Carmen, you should come on more often. I wish I had the time. I try to. I Like, I want to, but, you know, I... Between cooking and everything else to do with the house and then the kids and everything else, like, it's just hard. 
It looks hard to you, um, scrapping 2010. Lisa, I think Lisa, right? It looks hard to you. It's very simple. It's very, very simple. And everybody's doing them now, so you can catch like a thousand tutorials. Although I did see this one lady, which I won't say her name. Um, she did a tutorial on this, and I got so lost. I was like, what the heck? How did that turn into what I made? Like, I was lost. For those of you that know me, know that I do not like to measure. My life is so much easier when I can trace. So I do that as often as possible. <clears throat> I'm going to take just a smidge of this off. And let me see if I could get a little fancy here with you guys and use my little punch. Yeah, I can't. I can't deal. Because you go through all that work. You're like 95% done with the process. And then it's like, boop. Done. I don't know what my little um thing was that I had to dump these things into. Okay, what am I doing? Over here. Um, maybe right about here. You gotta eyeball these things so carefully so you don't go over. And you do anyway because that's just life. It could never be simple. Not for a crafter. Why would they make things simple? Where's my scissor? There it is. I'm gonna just take off this little thing here. And I'm just going to curve that out. I'll probably end up putting some lace or something on that little strip that's there just to cover that up. And I'm going to leave the back as it is. And then I'm going to cut this, throw this out and cut out my next section. And I have this cute little Cupid stamp that I'm going to use. And I'm going to stamp him out and color him in. He's pretty much naked, so that should be easy. Um... And we're gonna do this this way. Come on, you work for me, not against me. Thank you. All this just to mark down where's the center of this paper. <laughs> yeah, you could follow the pattern on top of the punch, but it is not easy. It's not easy because once you do, once you punch it out once. And you move it, okay, you might have that second one. But if you're doing a long strip of paper, you'll be lost. You'll be lost. In a second, you'll be lost. So I always turn it over and I look from the back. I cheat. I turn it over and I align my paper with the back. And that's the only way that I can ever get, to get it to actually cut all the way through as close to perfect. Because there's no such thing as perfection with those things. As close to perfect as possible. That's about the only way. All kinds of noises out here. <laughs> I 
I've done that so, so many times that I just stopped guessing. Then I said, forget it. Forget it. Not me. Well, you know what? Let me do that one more time. Let me cut up a little bit of, let me trim off a little bit of this paper here. Just in one spot in the top. Just to give it a little bit of room to breathe, just in case I'm a little long. Okay. I gotta get me a new paper trimmer, you guys. A long one, because I, I won one from Instagram, but it's a short one. Um, and I can put my 12x12 12 12 through it, because I'll end up just damaging the paper. Um, but yeah. I gotta get me one of those. And where's my freaking... I don't want to curse on YouTube. Oh, it's right in front of me. Hello. This is what happens. Let me get some red. <laughs> I tell you. And I have some hearts that I'm going to add to this, I think. This just makes my life so easy. And this one's going to be on the simpler, the simpler end because I said um, I just want you guys to more or less get to know what these things are. And I'm going to use the same for the top and for the bottom. So this is kind of why I left that space. Because I'm going to need uh, a little bit of breathing room. So that the card closes easy. And of course, look, look. You see? I measured, right? I'll tell you. So let me go ahead and trim a little more off the sides. Because if I did it to one side, I know I did it to the other. So I'm just going to trim a little maybe like up to there and I don't know how much up to there is so let me see how much I trimmed and then I'm gonna do the same to the other card that's my pencil I tell you I love making these kinds of um I love anything that's crafty. That's that's just the honest truth. I love anything that's crafty. I'm all over the place. What did I do? Come on, man. Get it together. Okay, so it's this one that's a little longer. Forgot to trim the top part of this. Oopsie. Thank God this isn't a job interview. I'll probably be like fired before you get hired. Okay. This one's good. There we go. One cohesive piece. And these are going to go on the inside. So, let's get this crack a lacking. Así se fue. ¿Quién se fue? Yeah, así se fue. Yup, you're right. Mm -hmm. Así se fue. I got it now. <laughs> Así se fue la cosa. Okay. Okay, don't get stuck in your own level. I 
I'm not screaming at you guys. I'm just screaming at this crazy paper that tells me all these nice words and then wants to get on crooked. It's not how we do things in these parts. So we're almost done with this card already, you guys. Like, this card is super, super simple. And you guys will see what the magic is. And I'm even going to throw in there a muscle or two just to show you that you can actually add upon adding uh, with these kinds of cards. And take it to the next level on the pop-up. I might have to punch out that bottom. I don't know. Am I going to have to? Yeah, I might have to. Maybe, maybe not. Let's see what I do. What am I going to do? What do I have? Do I have any pink paper? No. This is what happens when you low budget. I don't want to use that true love because I'm thinking about using that. And my thing on my bob. So I'm just gonna kind of use this. Did this thing even cut? It did something off angle like crazy, but it should be good enough to at least cover that. Should be good enough to at least cover that, so that's what I'm going to. <laughs> All right, Brandy, thanks for joining. I know these long sessions. These long sessions. I don't think anybody that was here at the beginning is still here. <laughs> if they are, you guys are brave. I tell you that. Because to, to stand here and watch somebody all this time. So much appreciation goes out to you guys. You don't understand. It means so, so much to me. Because I know it's not easy. There's a million things in life going on at the same time. So I just highlighted that because that's just me. <laughs> And then I'm going to put my little card down there, and then I'll have the little background there, so that'll work. I'm okay with that. Okay, so I got my first part done. And I have to put something here, but I have, uh, I did the little cutout, which I'm going to be adding somewhere in there and embellishing somehow, some way. Then I just want to get to the important, the gusto, right? <laughs> oh, thank you. It really does mean the world to me, you guys. You don't understand. I literally came from having less than... I think it was... I was stuck at 68. It was at a 60-something or 70 subscribers for almost a whole year. And I felt like I was almost wasting time. Like, I was so close to giving up. 
and even now like my videos don't get like a humongous amount of views um for the most part they don't but i'm happy now because i know that at the end of the day the ones that are coming on to see me um and the ones that are leaving comments on my video you know like they care like they're actually taking the time to watch me i don't care about the rest of the world they could come and go it's the ones that you see actually leaving comments on your videos every single time. Those are the ones you want to bend over for every single time. You know, those are those are the ones you want to go like you know be on the call if you will. And don't get me wrong, I don't mind you know new subbies every now and then. Obviously, that's you know we all want to get seen, but much more than getting seen is actually the connection. You know. They're actually making friends, like to actually say, yeah, that person's my friend. Like, you would never think that you can actually say and do that, but that actually happens here. Those things actually happen here. So, this is just embellishment stuff. I have to add, I'm going to add my little... Uh, corner tip here so let me just move some of this stuff out of the way so you guys can see what I'm doing and actually I'm gonna flip them over since they're white so that you guys can actually really see what I'm doing so this is the little housing thing right there's um that we folded this is the thing that we scored we scored down the middle scored here scored here and then we made the X we scored it in the X form so now we have these little triangles that are here okay you push the center fold down and then it automatically goes like this. Now we have to put this here. So you wanna to try to find it as close to the center as possible. So the, about there is good. And the only thing you wanna glue guys is this triangle here. So we're gonna glue this triangle here. You don't wanna glue any of the other flaps for now. All of that stays open and free, okay? So we have this triangle here and we are going to, I'm just going to hold my, my page up a little bit so that I can see more or less where I am and that I am halfway more or less. That's about right. I'm just going to hold this down right now and press it close. Yes. Yes, it is. And I'm, I'm a person that I don't, I don't go out. Like, I, I stay home. I go out, like, when I need to and stuff like that. So I'm not, like, in other people's houses or visiting this one or the other one. So, like, for me especially, it really does mean a lot to be able to, like, come here and talk to you guys and get to know you and watch you create and watch you evolve. Same way you guys are watching me evolve. And it's just so cool. So now you see how that goes. So that's that's really the magic right there, you guys. That right there. That little airplane thingamajig is what makes this card amazing. So we have that. Now we're going to decorate this. We're going to make some little squares, and I'm going to glue them on there. And then I'll show you how to glue this part onto that so that everything folds as you close it. And I'm going to put this paper to the side because I'm not going to keep using this paper. And... I don't think I'm going to have time to do the decorating on the, as far as the little, um, the little stamp guy that I was going to put on there. So what I'm going to do, most likely, trying to find some kind of paper that I can use in here. What I'm going to try to do most likely is, um, once I finish them all, like I normally do, like I'll make a video and I'll just share, um, what I did. And then somebody is going to be... Which is this one? Somebody is gonna be winning that card, uh, which I want to do too. Is to get lost. Beautiful. I like this. This one looks cute. Hopefully, I can get all of the cards out of this one. It's a beautiful place to get lost. I like that. I found butterflies. Now I find butterflies. <laughs> um, I don't want to make you guys dizzy, but. I just want to make sure there's nothing else in here that I can use. So. 
I'm constantly rearranging my room, you guys, trying to make it more crafty efficient, if you will. So, like, my markers will be on one spot, my papers is somewhere else, and then the one day that I'm looking for something and I can't find it, or I'm finding that I have to keep going, like, out of my way, then I'll, I'll stop everything and literally rearrange my whole entire room. Just so that I can get to that one thing, even though I won't end up using it for three months, and then... Once I realize that I'm not using it at all, then I'll end up switching the room again because it's not functioning for me anymore. <laughs> it's so, oh my God. Yeah, that sounds like me. Uh, do what I gotta do housewise, then the next thing you know, off into my little crafty world I go. Off into my little crafty world I go. That's why a lot of the times you guys will see my videos and I'll have music. Um, and I won't be talking through them. Or if I do speak, I'll speak like real quick at the beginning and I won't be able to finish it out. Because it's just really hard for me to find the, the space, you know, the, the, the time of the day where everything is just quiet. You know, where I'm, you know, I'm Spanish, so I know most households are like this as well. But we're, we're loud and proud and always talking and my kids are always fighting with each other about something or the other one sister does one thing the other sister does something else so it just makes it really really hard sometimes to uh, find the space we're gonna make this a little shorter Let's find the space and time to actually go and make tutorials where i'm dictating everything step by step i wish that i could do that i wish that i could do that um I need four of these. I don't know if this paper is going to be enough. So, I made that one actually a little bit uh, shorter on the on the long ones. So, I made these um, little squares about two inches and almost almost two and over so that's a quarter that's a half almost two and a half like one little dash line before the two and a half so that's how wide they are and height wise about a little bit more than three inches so three inches in one little line <laughs> you guys like how i measure <laughs> um so let's see maybe i can get all four of these out of there Como Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> I'm actually going to cut those down a little bit in height because this is a little bit shorter but I think this will actually work well uh, for the card because it'll actually give it a little bit of a border all the way around so I'm going to cut the, the height on the other ones down you know when I first got this is the, the, the cutting um board that I got when I first got it and I saw that wire I was like what the heck is that wire for I almost ripped it out because I thought that it was messed up and I'm like what the heck is that wire for and I'm over here pulling on it and then I realized, like, oh, that's like the marker. It marks the paper. Oh, my God. I was two seconds away from breaking this thing. Be still my heart. And I never saw that before. <laughs> Like, I like this one for cutting small stuff out. Like, these kinds of um, little cards, it's is cool to cut with this one because it's small, it doesn't take up that much space. And I could do all of these small little things on there. So we have our four little cards. Push this to the side, and we have our thingamabob over here, and we have our thingamabob over here. So I'm just going to decorate this so that I can show you guys how to um, put it together. And... 
I always bite off more than I can chew. So you guys are probably used to seeing that with me already. Huh. Maida's here. Maida, you made it. I was just talking about you a little while ago. We're actually making the pop-up card now. I don't know how long you've been here. But we're actually making the pop-up card. We already made um, a Z-Fold card. Right now I'm just scraping off some of these edges because this is a tearaway paper. So it has um, a little tearaway ridge on each of them. So I just want to get rid of that. Since I'm going to do it to the top of my little do it to all the other sides. Okay. Alright, so we got that going. Let me just highlight it like usual. Um, yeah, this already has black. So I'm not going to do the black. I'm going to do it in red. I was going to do it in black, but nah. This is Valentine. Valentine theme, Valentine related something or the other something or the other so I have a question to ask you guys do you want me to get into the the pointed one or you want me to do that on a different live and then I could just finish doing this um this card and actually decorate the whole thing and stamp it out and stuff like that or do you want me to get to the other card uh, which is the one that opens up like a little tabletop Cause that's what I think of when I see it, a little tabletop, like a little carousel tabletop. Okay. So I'm going to get into this and start um, gluing these little panels in. And if you have tape, double-sided tape, then use that, but you don't have to do all of this gluing if you have double-sided tape. I'm just a fan of glue over double-sided tape, because double-sided tape to me doesn't really last too long. I know for some things it's awesome, but I just love my glue. Ah, bien, amor, tú puedes hacer bullying, no te preocupes. Tú puedes hacer ruido. Just adding these little squares in. And then I want to do my drawing. So I just want to... You want to do the tabletop? I don't know nothing about football, you guys. Nothing at all. That's like talking to me in Chinese. Or some other language that I don't know. And luckily for me, my husband is not big on sports either, so. Uh, it's not a thing to do in my house. Okay. So we have that one. We have. Did I put this up right? Oh, I got scared. I thought I put it upside down. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I figure once you guys knew how to make the card yourself, then. You guys can go crazy making these things. And I don't know who invented it. I know it wasn't me. I just know I've seen a lot of people making these things. Um, and they were just super cute. So I thought I'd give it a crack and see if I could do it. Because I love making pop-up stuff. I've made a few um, flip books that actually have pop-up dimensions. Um, things that pop up, but not like this though, with the little muscle squares, which I'm actually going to show you how to do um, in just a second. So, we have our 
we have our card open, right? So this is what you want to do. You want to lay your card in the center, okay? Fold this over like so, fold this over like so, okay? And you want to make sure that it's right in the center. Then you want to glue on this corner here in the top of the flap, and you want to glue on this corner here in the bottom, okay? So that's exactly what I'm going to do now. Just add some glue just on the one corner, not the whole thing, just in the one corner. And she's in center. Tighten that down. And then on the bottom over here. Okay, you guys so once you have that then you more or less pop this little section out get your little folds going help it out at the beginning let it all kind of mellow out <laughs> now you finally made it. I wish I had a craft closet, but I don't. <laughs> I got a table. I got another table, a desk. I got a desk. It's officially a desk. It's even got the little thing over it. It's pretty tall, too. But it almost hits my ceiling. Or oh, what? The shelvings and stuff, but still. So you guys see? Magic. And then it folds close, and it opens, and it closes, and it opens. Pretty simple. And that's all you have to do. You don't glue nothing else, but just that top corner there, and that bottom corner there, <clears throat> because that's actually what allows it to flip. So when it starts closing, this part folds itself down, and it does that for opposite ends. So if you can see this one, and this one kind of fold down close, and then you're good to go there. So that's it for that. Let me just add a little bit of glue. I felt it coming up somewhere. And then the rest is just embellishments. So let's get into the last one. And I'm going to try to run through that real quick. Not too quick that you guys can understand it, but it is super, super easy. That is the easiest card of all. Like I said, the thing that takes the most time is actually gluing the stuff down. So you guys pretty much got this one. We got this one okay and we did this one and we already had this one and whoever wins this one it will be decorated for you before you know before it arrives to your casa in the mail and we have the other one we have this one so we're gonna have at least five um five possibly six of these uh you know cards sets in total to give away today so let's get on to the next one for the next one this is what we're going to need you're going to need four sheets four eight by eight squares you can make them as big or as small as you want but just make sure that your dimensions are exactly the same. It's got to be 6x6, 8x8, 10x10, 12x12. It doesn't matter, but it's got to be, you know, or 4x4. Four four. You, get, you get the drift. So you're going to need four of them. So I'm going to cut four of these into my 8x8s. Um, and that will give me the dimension of the one that I just made. And... I'm going to this rather quickly and just kind of zoom through this and then what you want to do you're going to well let me not get ahead of myself I'll get there I'll get there in a second I'll let you guys know I think this is the kind of um the kind of card that you actually want to decorate before you build at least that was my experience with um the one that I was trying to make yesterday I felt like once I made it, 
once I assembled it, like it was like I like I saw on the video. Once I assembled the whole card, it was like a pain in the butt to like add um all the little squares. So my advice would be for anybody that's gonna make this card is to decorate it first, like make your your score lines and stuff like that. Like I'm about to show you in a second. But definitely get like your prep work going. Like once you do your first one and you know how big the dimensions are gonna be. Like this one's gonna leave me with four by four squares. So I know off the gate I'm gonna need four by four squares to decorate it. Like you know, um scrapbooking paper. Um so like get yourself the four by four squares. And before you get anything actually glued into place and stuff like that, um start adding those in their designated spots, which I'll show you now. So I have four of these eight by eight uh, papers. That's it for this, we don't need this no more. These extras, put them away for any other, any other project that you have to do because you won't need these either. The only thing that you're gonna need is your um, scoreboard and, and you don't really need that if you have a ruler and you can you can fold halfway, halfway, all the way across. I'm gonna do it on the scoreboard just to make the lines crisp, but it's very simple. So all you wanna do, this is an eight by eight, so you wanna score it in half, so you're gonna score it four inches. Turn the paper over, score it at four inches. Leave it to the side for now. To do that to all your papers, by four on all of them and this is the last one So we have our four sheets all scored down the middle uh, to create this grid of four squares. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cut it right down the center line right here. Only to the center. And you're going to do that again for all four. So this is all you want to do. Put that to the side. On to the next one. For some reason this seems like it's off, but I'll figure that out when I get there. Hopefully I didn't do this wrong. So I didn't really measure all the way through and through. And for some reason this seems longer than this side, but let's see. Okay, well. I guess I was right. So I'm going to cut off that excess because I did it. That'll just throw everything off. It has to be exact measurements. So let me see how many of these I did this to. This one's fine. So I guess it was just that one. This doesn't make any sense. What did I do? Okay, I'm going to have to make one more. <laughs> Because <laughs> I don't mess that one up. In a second, I messed that one up. So, uh, let me make one more real quick. I thought I measured it right, but I guess I did it. Oh, I forgot to take the half an inch off. That's what happened. Because this is now eight and a half by. So when you start rushing, yeah, this is eight by eight and a half. So I gotta take a half an inch off. And that's what happened. But since I didn't do it on the other ones, I can't do it on this one. So this is gonna be half an inch off. You want it to be eight by eight, but I did this wrong. Which is the shorter side. 
so but maybe I can fix that let's see can I fix it on all of them one two three can I fix it on this one too this is a why well, can't fix it on this one well, I can fix it on that one all right so I figured it out I'll fix it at it don't you worry no worries the good thing is that I scored out four inches like I was supposed to so my score lines are exactly where I need them to be I forgot one important step you guys and that was to actually cut off the half an inch because this paper is actually eight and a half inches long so I'm just gonna do that real quick so that everything is uniform thank God that I scored everything at four inches so now it's not too much of a situation now everything is exactly the same So I got my four pieces. Put that back. So this one's cut. This one needs to be cut. So cut, cut. This one's cut. And this one's cut. Okay, you guys. So like I was telling you before this card the way that it's the way that it, it's folded and stuff um it's just a lot easier for you if you make your squares beforehand and, and glue them in okay so let me see what i have that i can do real quick these this paper is what this is four and a half by six and a half so this might work what i have here and one, two, three, four, five. So I got four. So I'll do four in this pattern. Okay. I'll do four in this pattern and something else that goes with that. Maybe not from this one. Um, what do I have here? Is this double sided or no? Okay. Maybe not from there either. This takes more time on deciding than it does actually constructing it. It's so funny. I need something that matches with this thing. Jesus. Okay, so it won't be none of those. Maybe I can use something from here. So busy. Paper's so busy. This might do. So I gotta pull out. I gotta pull out four, four by four squares. So I'm gonna do this real quick, you guys. There's the pattern over here. Four, four by four squares, that's what I need. For that one at the top and the bottom. This one. I'm going to need at least one more strip of this because I got to get that extra one. That one will make three of them. So we have 
two, four by four. Huh. I got one. So we have these four, which we actually need eight, but I'm only going to do four so that you guys can at least see what it looks like. I'm going to do the four top and the four bottom. And we're going to, we need actually eight uh, for the top and then the four for the bottom. So I'm actually going to do these pages two at a time. I love those little scraps because they're perfect for the planner. Uh, I'm bringing that up to four inches. So four by four. So those scraps make perfect little flags and stuff uh, to cover them things up. Four by four. Put that there. Four by four. So we're gonna do it that way. And to show you how this thing works, I have my squares there. I'm gonna grab my first sheet. And the first thing I'm gonna do before I even add the papers, I'm gonna score it so that I can just make it easier for myself later. So to make this, what you want to do is you want to fold this like this. So you want to bypass this little and just bring this like so. You want to hold it down. So you see the shape. And then this flap here is going to get glued to that. So the only ones that we need to worry about is this flap and this flap, okay? So this is where we're going to add our picture for now. These two flaps, this one and this one. The bottom one is going to stay black for now because I'm not going to do um, the, bo the, the bottom one. I just wanted to show you guys more or less the dynamics of how to get this stuff done. And this is going to be... Now that I do it, this is going to be like this, so yeah, this one. Mm -hmm. You're welcome, Tina. Thanks for coming by. Okay, I just have to make sure that I'm... Um, this thing is perfectly aligned so just make sure that it aligns well because this is the the issue smaller I get to go uh, I didn't do that so I actually left them exactly the dynamic so you might want to actually cut this square to be a little bit smaller than the the square you're putting it in so just cut it a fraction of a hairline smaller then what needs to go in the square itself or oh, when you put it on just make so you see you're making like these walls and then you have like this lip here and then what happens it folds when it folds close you're gonna have this lip that's gonna come up like so okay so this is what we do with this we more or less glue this page in like so okay and then you move on to the next one now at this stage you will probably put your next page here okay and then 
put it up. I'll show you how to make the card once I get the rest of these um, things lined in. So again, when you're folding this card, just make sure that you are folding it exactly. You want to make sure that this, you know, doesn't meet with that end there, that it's right at the fold line. And then just bring it, your finger across this part so you have a folded little lip there. And then this is going to go on that side. So you want your image in the bottom and in the top. make sure that um, your papers in a good spot okay and I might have to trim this paper off just a little bit Seven seventeen. you guys have been on for quite some time now And then on the opposite side. So remember, this is going to go like this, right? So you don't want to put it on this one. You want to put it on this one. So they're going to be the ones that are directly diagonal from each other. And then the one. So there will be like three of these consecutive that you want to um, add your, your papers to. And it just makes it a lot easier to do it before. Because once it's folded, then you have to kind of like start pushing on one side or the other. Um, to actually get that paper, you know, in the way you want it and this one here in the bottom can be a little bit on the, on the difficult side so it's good if you do this beforehand but i cut out enough I do the square the same way that you're doing this so put this put this and put this all at once uh score your your thing and make sure that it's nice and score so when you go to put it together you're good to go but since it's black it's okay. I will be fixing this up, you know, on my off time. So I'm just going to fold that close and make sure I have that good there. And just make sure everything glues down well. Make sure everything is good there. And then push this in and same drill. So you guys more or less see and then once you glue them you glue them this way so you're gonna glue um, back to back and you're just gonna keep adding them back to back back to back back to back and I'm sure that you could make this thing probably pretty um, huge if you wish they almost look like paper cranes but not really <laughs> um, so again just bringing it over and I always use black cardstock, you guys. I know sometimes it's not the easiest to see, but I use black black cardstock because I bought, I had to buy when they were on sale for one ninety nine at Michaels. I I buy my stuff online because it's really hard for me to get to the actual store. Um, so I, Michaels makes you buy multiples for some odd reason, and I guess since they were a dollar ninety nine, they made you buy twelve at a time. So guess what I did? I mean, it was only one ninety nine a piece, so I was like, okay. So I bought twelve. <laughs> so I have a lot of black cardstock now. <laughs> I have an abundance of black cardstock now. Well, not so much of an abundance because that's all pretty much I use. So I am starting to get to that point where um, I'm running low. Okay, let me just make sure I'm doing this properly. Yep, these three. Um, Just making sure that everything is leveled properly. Ugh. Come on, man. Let 
why is it that every time you get towards the last ones that you're making something always has to go wrong what is the dealio why are you not wanting to adhere properly mm -hmm. i guess that one for some reason cut out an angle And I'm not really putting them in any specific, um, you know, I'm not worried so much about where the design is pointing, if it's pointing this way or that way. But you could get more technical when you make your own, especially if you want things to look a certain kind of way. My concern right now is putting it together for you guys, making sure that I can do all three cards, because that was my challenge <clears throat> for myself today. Even though I didn't make it because I wanted to do all three cards in under two hours, but I wanted you guys to also see the process of how this is actually done. So you can try it because crafting is magic. So now this is closed. And I'm definitely gonna try to like, I wanna see, I'm gonna turn, try to turn this into like a flip book. Um, it's gonna be a small flip book probably. But I wanna see how it works like on a flip book level. Because I see these two walls here, and I'm like, okay, I could definitely do something, and I could definitely do something that flips here. So, I don't know. You guys might see something crazy coming out of my channel soon. Call it like an octopus or something weird. I like giving my stuff weird names. Even though I know it doesn't help it catch on, but. But as long as you guys get to see it, I am one happy camper. So as always, fold it over. Okay, this is the last one. So you want to make sure that you fold this one straight over so that these two squares are matched exactly. And then this one's going to go like this. And then the gluing part. And we are done with this. Woohoo. My husband tells me you should do three hour live shows and I'm like what I don't know if I can handle making a three hour live show I do two hours and I'm like counting minutes which I know is like bad but I can't help it my brain is always on like okay you gotta do this you gotta do that and the kids this and the kids that so even though I'm here with you guys in you know in physical form my mind is going off on what do my kids need, what do I have to do, what do I have to do before they go to, you know, they, they got to go to school tomorrow. I got to get them ready for this, I got to get them ready for that. Like, my mind is all over that, um, even though I'm here, <laughs> which I know is bad. It's so bad. It's like we never stop being a mom no matter what we're doing. No matter how involved, no matter how detailed. Your mind is always on mommy duty. I don't know what I'm going to do when they're all out of the house. Maybe then you guys will catch me going live all the time. Okay, no, no, no. Don't get lost on me. The last squares. Oh, I'm telling you, it's always the last ones. They give you the most headaches. Come on, man. Why you gotta do this to me? Okay. 
first of all, you do this. I'm trying to see, it makes it a little hard with everything being black. There we go. Okay, there we go. You're lucky yours a little. I don't know what I would do to have my kids be small again. They're all teenagers now. Now they have thoughts and opinions. They're all these little individuals. They want to go up when you want to go down. And they want rice when you want to make spaghetti. And they want spaghetti when you want to make rice. And they don't want the white one, they want the yellow one. No pork chops today, mama want chicken. Meanwhile, the pork chops is defrosted, seasoned, and ready to go. Like, I don't know what I'm going to. <laughs> but you got to love them and enjoy them while you can because the time does go by fast. It goes by so fast. Okay, you guys. So we are constructed. So as you can see, we have our four... Where does this one go? Our four walls, right? That's how this goes. So peaks up, right? All the peaks up, peaks up. You want it to be all the peaks in the same in the same direction, right? You want all your peaks to be pointing in the same spot. And this is what you do. Peaks pointing in the same direction? Nope. This is them pointing in the same direction. Then you glue one on top of the other. Hold them together. Okay. Hold them together. Peak is pointing up, so let's get the next one on there. It doesn't work if the peaks are pointing in different directions, you guys. It'll still fan out, but you're going to have a very weird looking card. So, peaks are up. Okay. Like I said, you just want to make sure that your peaks are pointing in the right direction. And my thing went out of memory. Let me just refresh it. I don't know what it is with this Verizon thing. Before I got Verizon, my, my computer was fine with memory. It had no issues. Now, since I've had Verizon, it's always saying out of memory, out of memory, out of memory. And it makes me refresh the page. I don't know why it does that. It's so odd. Okay. All the peaks are pointing up. Just hold them together. And I'm going to decorate these things, you guys. Um, the ones that I didn't get to finish. But um, if you want to see more or less. And then it just closes like this. So what you would do, since this is like a little book, if you will, you would decorate the front and the back. Which I'm probably going to do here for you guys. You will decorate the front and the back. Add like a little drawstring, um, a little ribbon or something to it. Let me make 
this four inches. Here's our bought the same. Get that going there. Let's see what we do, and then that one was on that one. Voila. And it's like a little book. And if you add like little, obviously you can't add an envelope and fill it up with a whole bunch of stuff, but you could definitely put like little pockets here and put tags because the book closes in a way that the tags will pop out through the top. And you actually have a little bit of give, like it doesn't have to be so squeezed tight. Where you can actually put like little pockets and make like little tiny tags. Um, or like put little stickers, put, make like little envelope pockets and put stickers inside of it or something. So this is what I'm going to do with that one. Only because this kind of matches. Maybe a little bit of this. I'm most likely going to glue, um, you know, a ribbon on each to wrap around it because even when it opens, let me just make sure, even when it opens, it should be, it should be okay. It'll be glued in. It should be fine. It shouldn't interfere with the mechanism. I don't think it should anyway. We'll find out sooner rather than later. I'm going to add like a little ribbon to it and just use it so that you can kind of keep it tight. So the person, a person that's receiving something like this would never know, like, that this thing is gonna pop out like a pinata. <laughs> like, they would never know. Um, I just think it will make the cutest little cup, like, saucer type thing. Like, I don't know, my mind just goes everywhere. I see a shape and like, I, I, my mind just connects it with all these different things. So, like, I see this kind of book and um, this kind of, you know, uh, card, if you will, because this, it doesn't seem like much of a card to me. And it seems more like a pop-up book than it does a card. And to finish um, this thing up, I'm going to add this glue real quick. And... Then I gotta finish embellishing um, the the other cards. But what I do want to do with you guys before I let you go is I'm gonna start drawing the winners for today's make and take. And let's see who's gonna take these babies home. And whichever ones are not embellished, which most of them are not embellished all the way, um, I will finish up, and you'll get a little bit of a surprise when you do get them because you won't know exactly how it's gonna look all the way through and through uh, but that's kind of like it's not like a cute little book and it doesn't matter if this isn't glued there all the way it's better if you don't glue it to the spine itself give it that little bit of room and I'll definitely you know you know let this dry but isn't that like a cute little book like and since every page has its little corner, you could definitely make it more of a pop-up book if you add like muscles to it, which a muscle is more or less, where's my thing? This is a muscle, okay? And you can make these smaller, but it's just a cubed square, right? Nice and tight. And what these do is you put them in the corner and you glue them 
to both sides see like you will glue this side and this side and you would stick it in that corner there and just close the pages and then when you open them then you can stick stuff here or you can stick stuff there so what will happen is obviously with this one it won't do it because it's just too big of a muscle um, but if it was smaller it probably should work because it doesn't go all the way out so if you was to have a smaller one then you will be able to close something like this or even with this you can close it um, but the muscle will close out like that and then when you open up the book then you will have things so whoever gets this is going to get a nice surprise let's just put it like this whoever wins this one is going to get a nice surprise because I'm going to hook it up I'm going to make it pretty I'm going to make it so pretty for you so with that being said let's get to the make and take woohoo the long awaited moment and let me just tie these things together while they dry so that I don't have this book popping up all over the place and I'm going to Dollar Tree and hopefully I can get some nice um, embellishment stuff because last time I went which is why I'm so empty because I usually restock every month but my store was empty, so I didn't get a chance to buy anything. Oh my god, look how cute. Okay, so I didn't get to buy anything. So now I don't have anything to embellish with. And I'm sad. But God is good. And he's going to fill up my store with embellishments. Because I've been praying hard, and he knows that we got the hookup. So he's going to do me the favor and let them know that I need those things there by the time I get there. So, I have one, should I throw this one in the mix? That might be a bonus. I have two, where are my other ones? Three, this one is the pop-up one that I have to finish which is gonna look super cute when I'm done so four and then we have the two Prima ones which are gonna get a little bit of a sentiment on each one um, and these are the ones that are done and then I'm gonna finish embellishing this one this was my test run yesterday this was my practice run but I'm gonna hook it up and then we have this one so we're gonna start off with the first one that we started today so I'm gonna go for the home run, which is the one that I did yesterday. And we'll get the show rolling. And I'm going to get my little piece of paper and get my numbers ready, you guys. And we have nine people watching now. So we're going to make it pretty simple. So that I don't have you guys here forever and a day. Because I know you guys got stuff to do and family to be with. I'm going to bulge out my little pieces of paper here. And we're going to make it from one, from 1 to 15. Okay, you guys? So for the green one, from 1 to 15, and I'll let you guys know when to go. Making sure that you guys can see me writing. Um, she already has her magic number. You guys can go whenever you're ready. And your mark, get set, and go. You're ready. Getting warmer, getting warmer, colder. Stop. Stop. We have a winner. I need a horn. Bam, 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 bam. We have a winner. Lucky number 12. Hi, Shaniqua. Where you been, girl? Lucky number 12, Miss Left Handed Crafter, has won this. Babe, I need you to email me your address, okay? Um, if you don't know my email, then drop me a DM or go to 
I should have a link on my channel of how to email me. I should have a direct link there somewhere. So if anything, you can do that or you can DM me. So left handed crypto. Okay. So that's that one. That one's yours. Now we're going to go for this one. Okay. And this one. We are going to go for um girl, you missed the show. We did a whole bunch of cards. Well, we didn't do a whole bunch, we did three. <laughs> um, let's see, from one from one to fifteen, and the numbers. The number's written down, and she's got it in her little secret spot, and you guys can go. <laughs> yes, Barry, somebody won already. Left handed crafter won the green one of the cards. Stop. Dana, you won. You won. Woohoo. Dana Fryer. You won. You were the first person to say the number eight. So this card, baby, is for you. I need you to go to my channel and I should have a link for my email. If it's not there, which I know it is, but... In case you can't get through, then hit me up on the DM and let me get your address, darling, so that I can get her out to you. And she is Butterfly. And this one is yours. Now, let's do this one, which I made her a while ago, but she needs a home. Doesn't have any sentiment inside. I figured you could hook it up however you want to. She's a total DIY girl. So, um, from 1 to 15, and let's pick a number. And she's got her number ready. She's very dimensional. All um, die cuts. Hand painted with metallic paints. She's bedazzled sun. So she good to go. She got her ride. She's ready to roll. She got her ride and she's ready to roll. Stop. Stop, stop. We have a winner. Lucky number seven, Miss. Stacy Nicole Aquarius Artist, you are today's winner for my ride along girl. You got her. Woohoo for you. So this one, darling, is yours. Same as before. You can send me a DM, DM and send me your address or you can find my email link on my channel and email me your address, whichever one you feel most comfortable with. So, we're going to leave these two babies for last. For the next one, which is going to be the Valentine, hooked up to perfection with the secret and everything. So you won't know what you get until you get it. Um, twist pop-up card that we made here today. Everything's going to be nice and hooked up. You'll see. The number has been selected. And she's going to keep it in her, her little pocket. So you guys can...
Stop! We have a winner! And the winner is... Mayra! Mayra, lucky numero cinco, has won the Valentine's Twist pop-up card. That's a mouthful. Woohoo for you! You won! You guys can stop with the numbers now. <laughs> We're on to our next card. Let's do our Once Upon a Time card. And this one was inspired by Little Red Riding Hood. She even has her Little Red Riding Hood storybook right there. And the little bird is trying to swoop it away, but we're not going to let him because we'll close the card before he gets it. With this pretty little Little Red Riding Hood just walking along through the woods. Now, to get our numbers going. A number has been selected. You guys can start now. Stop! We have a winner! Joyce Vaughn was the first person to call out the number. The lucky number is 10. Lucky number 10, Joyce Vaughn has won Little Red Riding Hood. Joyce Vaughn. Uh, Joyce Vaughn. Let me find you up here somewhere. Joyce Bond. Red Riding Hood. Woohoo! Joyce, you have won. And I'm going to put you right in there. Holding the secret message. So this little darling is yours. Now, for La Piece de Resistance, which is my pointed card, that folds into a little table thingamajig, we're about to do this one, which is the last one for today, and I want to thank you guys all so much for joining me. <laughs> oh, Barry. Don't worry, Barry. There's there's always more chances. There's always more chances. I do this every weekend. All right, you guys. I'm going to write the number down. When I say go, then you guys go. Let me just make sure that I have my... Don't start yet. Don't start yet. Don't start yet, you guys. I haven't even written the number down. You guys are putting numbers into my head. Um... Okay, she has her number selected, and your mark gets set. I need everybody to type stop, so that I know when the numbers start and when the numbers end, because I'm lost now. <laughs> I can't begin until you guys stop throwing out numbers so that I can give everybody a fair chance. So I need everybody to stop throwing numbers. Write the word stop or put an S or something. So that I know that you're not you're not putting any numbers in. <laughs> alright, alright. 
<laughs> Mayra, Dios mío, Mayra. Breathe, girl. One second. I'm going to say go. Everybody roll stop. I need stop. <laughs> All right. Now let everybody stop. <laughs> now you can go. <laughs> you guys are crazy. Try to drive me crazy. Stop. We have a winner. And the last winner for the day has taken the last piece of cake. And I want to thank you also very much for joining you guys. And Little Crafts Creation has won the pointed corner pop-up book. Because this is not a card. This is a book, okay? This is a book. <laughs> it's got pages. It's a book. <laughs> so we're going to do this. And Little Crafts Creations got number four. And I believe I have your address, but just send it to me just in case. And I'll get these things ready for you. Now, I know that last week some of you guys won some stencils from me. Those are going to go out this week. Let me work on these for the rest of this week, and then I'll get those out to you guys um, for the following week, and that's how I'm going to do it every week. I'll be catching up with the week before because that way I can embellish and hook up and, you know, do everything nice that I want to do on um, to the things that I'm giving away to you guys. This has been an awesome, awesome. I can't believe I was on here for three hours. Oh, my God, I think I broke my own record. I don't even know how I did it. Um... Uh, blessings hugs loves and all the good stuff to all of you guys and i will catch you guys on my next one and i don't know i don't know what we're gonna do next week but i'll figure it out and i'll keep you guys posted as usual bye for now